If I were reading the newspaper and I were reading the sports section and I read about a trunk that got caught in a monkey grinder at the Ringling Brothers and Barnum Bailey Circus, I wouldn't think it was the back end of a car. I would know immediately, oh, they're talking about an elephant here because I know Ringling Brothers, Barnum Bailey, um, monkey gr Is that what a monkey grinder is? <laughs> I would know that we're talking about an elephant here. Uh, let's say, on the other hand, I'm reading the headlines, and I read about a woman who was abducted and stuffed into a trunk. I wouldn't think she went up an elephant's nose. Why? Well, because I'm reading the headlines. These are news stories, and the context helps me to understand the word. Uh, and so it is when you and I go about the business of understanding the Bible rightly, we must understand context. In Revelation 3.20, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Jesus is such a polite guest, isn't he? He stands at the door of our hearts if we just open up and let him in. At least that's the picture we paint with that verse, but that's not the context. Jesus is addressing the church at Laodicea to whom he gives another famous verse. I know your works. You're neither cold nor hot, so because you're lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. And he rebukes them for their complacent faith. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. That's verse 19, right before he says, I stand at the door and knock. This is not the picture of a guest looking for someone to welcome him into their heart. Jesus Christ is the master of the house. And when the master comes back, because remember, this is the book of Revelation. We're talking about the return of Christ here. When he comes back, he expects to find alert and working servants, not lazy, complacent freeloaders acting like they own the place. Such persons will be thrown out into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of tears. In Matthew 24, Jesus says, Be ready, for the Son of Man will return at an hour you do not expect. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. And when he comes, it will be as a conquering king, and we will sit with him and all of the faithful at the wedding feast of the Lamb. That's a much more glorious picture than that of a passive Jesus knocking on the door of our hearts. By the way, did you notice in those pictures there was something missing on the door? A knob! Poor Jesus can't even get in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The context tells us this is not a verse that informs us how Jesus comes and dwells in the human heart. Does he do that? Does Jesus come and dwell in us? Yes, his Holy Spirit that he sends to us he saves us, he regenerates us, and he lives in us. And the biblical phrase is, he dwells in your heart. The question, of course, is how does he get in there? Uh, the biblical answer is repentance and faith. It is a work of God that only the Holy Spirit can do. And the verse in Revelation 3 has nothing to do with any of that. It's not talking about salvation. It is not talking about a call to repentance, per se, to get saved. Instead, it is a it is a threat. Hey, I'm coming in judgment. That's the context. I'm going to return. How will you be found? I'm going to bang on the door. Wake up. Get with the program. That's the context, not with every eye closed and every head bowed. Ask Jesus. In your, the context just eliminates that. 